I am standing here in front of one of San Francisco's jewels here at the Raz Room inside of the Hotel Nico. Um, this is one place that um, for our nightlife is wonderful because it's kind of unique. It's a very intimate room where you will have some of the most uh, fabulous entertainers internationally known uh, come here to perform for you. Um, I just have this feeling of intimacy with the performer as well as a great vibe. The hotel is wonderful, the, the, the room is wonderful, and the entertainers are fantastic. If this is only one place that you can come to while you're here in San Francisco, I think the Raz Room deserves your attention. So tell me, I know the Raz Room has celebrated its third year here in its yes. location here in Hotel Nico. And um, why is the room so well appreciated by uh, wonderful performers that you are able to uh, get to perform here? Well, Bibi, the owners, Robert Catani and Rory Paul, have the type of programming that can appeal to such a wide audience. Mm -hmm. You know, on any given night, you can go from jazz to comedy to musical theater to cabaret to R&B, classic soul, something for everyone. And I think that's what's, what's unique about this venue and, you know, for it to be in San Francisco. It's, mm -hmm. it's a, like a melting pot almost. So tell me, what is coming up? You know, this is our, the month of June and the month of Pride, Pride. and all that going on. What are some of the key shows that you have coming up that uh, we all might want to come and see? Well, sitting next to me are two highlights part of our uh, Pride Month. We have an amazing lineup, like I said, Broadway Musical Theater. And next to me, we have Connie Champagne and Matthew Martin. Oh my God. Hello. Hello. Hi. How Hi. are you? Hi. Oh, Hello. How are Lisa. you? <laughs> <laughs> well, Ashanti, you need to know, know right? <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's so wonderful to have both of you here. Of course, uh, you know, I've known both of these two for for many years and I've not only enjoyed their company as, as people and as friends but definitely have enjoyed their their wonderful talent on stage in many different venues but I, I definitely enjoy having them here and so I'm going to start with you Connie because I know you when is your show actually uh, appearing here at the Rats? Well uh, it's a special pride celebration show it's called Judy Garland Original Riot Girl because as you may know part of the legend around the Stonewall Riots, which um, you know, helped spearhead the LGBT pride movement, um, occurred on the night of Judy Garland's funeral, mm -hmm. right, Matthew? Right, right. And uh, people had waited in line all day at, at uh, Frank Campbell's funeral home to pay their respects to, to Judy. And uh, several of them came over to the, uh, to the Stonewall Bar. And legend has it that when the police raided the bar that night, because that was the custom in those days, you know, and uh, they withheld the police, you know, p kept them off at bay for, for uh, I think it's two days, of bricks and, yeah. you know, a lot the of- Queens fought back. Queens fought back, mm -hmm. uh, trans, <coughs> trans girls, trans women fought back as well. Uh, obviously a lot of young people who may not have had the connection with Judy Garland, but there was definitely that synchronicity that happened that day. And so um, to honor Pride, I thought it would be fun to take a lot of Judy numbers from that era along with, uh, you know, my modern takes on things. Judy, I think is going to do some, some Lady Gaga this show. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Many of you definitely know Connie Champagne and know that she has basically brought Judy back to life for us. Um, how You've been doing Judy for a long time and you, you seem to be fresh at it each time that I see you perform her. How do you keep Judy so fresh and new for you? Well, the character's so multifaceted. There's so much stuff going on, you know. Uh, the first time I performed as Judy Garland, I performed when I was young. I performed <laughs> the young Judy Garland, the, the, um, the Judy from the 1940s, you know, the Meet Me in St. Louis Judy in a show with my esteemed colleague here, Matthew Martin, called Christmas with the Crawfords. And it was directed by Alan Sawyer at the Artful Circle Theater. And this is what's interesting. When I first was cast, I said, well, I'm not anything like Judy Garland, you know? I'm not a brunette. I don't have brown eyes, et cetera, et cetera. I don't, I don't feel it. And the director, <laughs> Alan Sawyer, said, no, no, you could because you're a transformational actor. You, and so he said, we pop those brown contacts in and you physically start to 
find the differences. And so I got some coaches. I got the late Michael Benbrook, who was mm -hmm. so incredible, so talented, this guy. And of course, Matthew, who taught me a lot about, you taught me a lot about hands oh, and how you, to do the hands and stuff. Because Matthew had, of course, been, performed as Judy before. Um, so it was a collaborative thing. And now I've kind of, um, it, she's part of me, I guess. So to keep it fresh, it's easy because it's just right there. So uh, the thing with Judy Garland is I hope the thing with me as a performer as well, what I strive for, is to be as absolutely honest as possible with it. So if stuff happens with the audience, because the audience is like the other character. I mean, you guys, the audience, you, you pop me something, I'll respond to it, right? So uh, as you, you keep it real, and then the, the, the performance is magic. <laughs> You know, Matthew has been performing on stage here in San Francisco since you were probably a little tight in diapers, right? Um, I mean, and you've done so much, a variety of things, from Judy Garland with um, uh, Christmas with the Crawfords, as well as performing uh, Blanche Devereaux on the wonderful, and the wonderful, wonderful show that um, you've put together with um, um, other um, queens in the, in the city. Fasten your seatbelt, San Francisco. <laughs> it's going to be a bumpy night. The one thing that you do here is something um, somewhat... Um, interesting yeah. um and so why don't you talk a, a little bit about your show coming up in uh, later on this yes, month it's june 20th the week after connie's and it's part of the pride we're peppering it with pride week and i've had the um honor of performing here um a, a few times last year and this year as well and um it's called all singing all dancing all dead and this is <laughs> <laughs> and it's a tribute to uh, a lot of the late greats and people, performers who have inspired me and that I've grown up. Um, it's interesting what Lisa said too. It's what the great thing about the Raz Room is it's really a crazy quilt, melting pot of different performers. There's something for everybody. And it's also wonderful for local performers. I'm a native San Franciscan, proud of that. And uh, for us to perform with other Tony and Oscar winning people. I mean, to see Cloris Leachman and, and also more obscure artists too, like Marilyn May. It was like, I went, oh my God, Marilyn May. <laughs> and she's this powerhouse, wonderful performer. So I really love that about the Raz Room and they really mix it up. Let's break up the booze. excited about you know the rest of the year coming this month is going to be fabulous mm -hmm. and um, all I want to say is that if you're coming into San Francisco as a visitor for the first time or even for many times but you've not experienced the Raz Room you definitely want to come and see it this month during the entire uh, month where we're celebrating pride and the variety of artists that will be here will be worth your weight in gold for coming out here. But I would like to also say, this is the website, which is www.therazroom, that's two R's and two Z's, dot com, and you will be able to find out what's coming up in the following year. They've booked that far in advance. So 2012 is already out there for you to determine when you want, want to come here next time, okay? Um, I want to thank my guests here. I'm going to thank Lisa, thank Connie, you. Matthew oh, for okay. sharing. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Your shirt. Your shirt. Yeah. Why? Why the shirt? Oh, because I'm a huge Tim Lincecum fan. Yay. We. This is the home of the world champion San Francisco Giants and San Francisco, home of the Raz Room. Best place to be. Well, I, I will have something else for you coming up real soon, so stick around, okay? Thank you. One of the
the things that we try to do for you here at SF tonight is to take you around the city and show you all the wonderful things that San Francisco has to offer. And the place that I think is very interesting is a new location for anyone to come out and have a great time, and that is Rebel. Now, Rebel has been around for quite some time, but it just hasn't been under the same name or the same vibe. And tonight, I'm going to show you why it is different than it was before, who makes it different than it was before, and why you should be a part of this change. Well, you know, the feel of the bar is really different in, in, um, than most places because, you know, you get a sense of, you know, there's leather, there's um, this whole kind of manly thing going on. What was the whole idea behind that? Um, we basically looked at it and we wanted to create a bar that, you know, people today, they want a cool bar, not just a cool gay bar. And um, so we thought, like, what would we think, you know, what do we think would be cool and what direction would we like to take it? And then went from there and, and didn't hem ourselves into the traditional, like, black paint and flashing, you know, colored lights and stuff and just thought, let's make something cool that we would be, you know, proud for anybody to walk into and, and check it out. Um, and the vibe kind of carries through not only at, at night, but also during the day. I mean, you walk in and you definitely know that this is a cool place. You know, the, the pictures that you have in there with, you know, Marlon Brando, James Dean. I mean, that's really, that's really neat. Where did you get all the art? Where did the artwork come from? So we actually worked with a designer and his name is Michael Brennan. Um, he's designed a lot of stuff in the city and he actually painted all of these. Oh my so they're actually hand painted. Um, with like a silver acetate, so at night you'll see they sort of like the light bounces off oh of the God. pygmy. Yeah, you're open till 4 a.m. on Fridays and Saturdays. 4 a.m. Fridays and Saturdays, and then 3 during the week when there's parties. Okay. And, and the, what's also good is that you have food. We do. Speaking. We have an amazing kitchen. <laughs> they do such a great job. We actually teamed up with uh, Sneaky's Barbecue, which had run a successful delivery business, and um, they do amazing stuff. It's really high-end products and uh, at a reasonable cost, and, a, and it's, not a, it's not a snooty vibe at all. It's just like, yeah, it's good because we want it to taste good, not because it needs to be white linens or... I can actually lick my fingers and get away with it, right? I <laughs> you, baby, you need to lick your fingers. Um, now, you've got some great parties that are already going on. I mean, you opened your doors really in, what, February? Yeah. Um, and already, you've already established yourself as kind of the place to be. And um, one thing that we've talked about before is, you know, many people find themselves in the cash show most of the time. But for, for uh, you know, now we really have a great place to go to that's kind of out of the way of the cash show a little bit here. I think the Castro is really expanding mm -hmm. too. Um, a lot of people come from other cities and they say, oh, the Castro is so much smaller than I thought it would be. And I think that um, more and more people are excited to venture out a little bit to mm -hmm. find something fun. And hopefully what we end up becoming is a place that, that wherever you're at and whatever you did earlier on in the night, that this is where you'll end up. What we decided is to launch um, each day at a time, rather than trying to do everything all at once. Uh, so we started with Saturday, which is, is um, Joshua J. He's got an amazing party called Stallion. Uh, we do Friday nights, which is sort of our in-house, like this is Rebel, bare bones, this is how we do a party, um, and that's Friday night. And then the next one launching this month is uh, Thursday night. And what we've decided to do is take sort of almost like a San Francisco showcase and be the, the people who are throwing excellent parties throughout the city and have asked them to create something new and be like, all right, what's next? Well, what's coming up in on Pride Week? Pride Week is going to be a big one for you because it's your first one. It's our first um, Pride. And is there anything that you can kind of give me a sneak peek into? Well, I don't want to give you everything, okay. but I'll give you a couple of things. Okay. Um, one is that we will definitely have a float. Um, I love the Gay Pride Parade. It's supposed to be a party and a good time. And uh, I think it's the, the clubs and the bars job to make that party happen. Fabulous, fabulous. You got, I, I just can't express it enough. And one of the things that hopefully that we do for you here on SF Tonight is to bring to you uh, an insight to some of the places you've heard about, but you haven't had an opportunity to experience for yourself. So I always want to give you a sneak peek to that. And I think Paul's done a real great job to let you know that Rebel is on the map it's here to stay, and you better come and check it out. Thanks, Pa.